New vlog, new vlog. Hi everyone. I have to leave in about 10 minutes to go volunteer at one of my favorite bookstores. It's like a library bookstore that my childhood town runs. So I go and do her once a month. But I wanted to hop on before I leave to like intro that because I'm sure I'll record while I'm there. It is a nice rainy day today. I have dinner in the crock pot. I'm making split pea curry. I'm awake at like 9 a.m. I'm feeling good. I also want an update on what I'm currently reading because that has changed since my last vlog. Right now I am about 120 pages into Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is one of those books where I wasn't sure if I would start it and immediately DNF it because I'm like I don't know if I'm that interested in it anymore but it's actually pretty fascinating and I'm enjoying the characters. This book is set during so far during World War One. The whole setup of it is that Aphrodite is telling the other gods her favorite love story she's ever conducted. It's really sweet so far, which feels bittersweet to say about a book that is about the war. Also, I was not expecting one of the other characters in this that like she keeps narrating about is a black man from America coming overseas. So a lot of this is about race during the early 1900s, which I looked up reviews of this because I feel like for the amount of slurs in this, I don't know that she's the right person to go too deep into that story. I don't know. There feels like a fine line between like white woman writing black history. But I will say anytime that the characters experience racism, it's challenged on the page. So if anything, I think it'll be a good educational piece for like what it was like to be black during the Great War. But I haven't seen other reviewers call that out. I'm just being very sensitive toward, you know, let black people tell their own stories. I guess since it's not the main focus of this, like I'll chill, but I have to go now. But I just wanted to tell you this is what I'm currently reading and I'm enjoying it. Okay, I'm heading off to the bookstore and I will take you with me. After I give handsome so many kisses. You want kisses? Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been working for two hours straight. So I'm in the back room with all the books that aren't out yet and I'm gonna go through them and look for good stuff. Have I already taken more than I need? Yes. When you see this book, do you think, oh, Warner's read that in Russian, or is that just me? Hi, I'm back on the floor, so I can do a book haul. I was gonna preface these vlogs with a disclaimer that like, I don't really buy books anymore. And that certainly has been because of budget constraints. If I buy any books new, they're usually like one at a time. I spent $15 today on a big bag of books. Three of them are in the car because I got a couple for Shelby, kind of as a joke, kind of not. But I did get plenty for myself and I will be unbuttoning my pants because they are tight. I will say I tend to pick up things that I don't know if I'll read <laughs> when I go to this thing because it's like 50 cents. There were some good finds today. Not as great as it's been in the past, but good enough. The first one I got is Cast, which I actually already own. It's like over here. Oh, right here. This copy's been there for a couple of months. I already have one, but since it was only like 50 cents, I'm just gonna get this for Bonnie. And then Bonnie and I can buddy read or something. And oh my God, I can't believe I found this. A hardcover children's book of the Polar Express. This is one of my favorite Christmas movies. I've had on my agenda to buy this one day and since it was like a dollar, I couldn't pass it up. I don't care that it's used. I will be rereading this every Christmas until I die. So this is going on my kid shelf. I don't know what motivated me to do this, but this seagull story, I feel like I have seen this everywhere. And this is like a little old beaten up copy, but I didn't realize it has like photography in it and it's just like a short story. I need to research this and see if it was even worth my time. I just kind of grabbed it on a whim. 
And speaking of cute Christmassy, this is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by the same author who did The Wizard of Oz. I didn't even know this was a thing. And this would be a cute Christmas read for next year. I'm gonna try and do that every year now. Someone donated a copy of Dragonfly and Amber, which is the second book in the Outlander series. Someone commented on my favorite books of last year video and they were like, hey, you'd probably like Outlander. And I was like, oh, I've already read it. But then I sat and thought about it. I read it literally 10 years ago. I was 15. Like, I did not have my reading tastes figured out yet. I'm sure I like skimmed the sex scenes and I like felt really guilty about it. I'm sure I thought it was boring because it was adult romance. So ever since that comment, like maybe I should reread that and this was a dollar. I might reread the first one from the library and see if I want to repurchase the entire series, but couldn't pass this one up. I genuinely have no purpose for this next one. This is like a Reader's Digest massive copy of Mysteries of the Unexplained, and it's just an encyclopedia of like different stories of either paranormal things or like murders. I feel like this would be a fun thing to have at like a sleepover or just sitting around to like read every now and then. And I'm not gonna keep saying it was a dollar, but. There was this sweet little old lady that came in to donate a bunch of books. She was saying that she was moving to a retirement home so she had to get rid of a lot of her favorite books. She had like a whole bag dedicated to like women's nonfiction. I don't even know how to describe it. I guess like sexuality and like feminist theory, but two of them that she had were sex and history and goddesses and every woman. She actually had two copies of this and one was like decrepit and falling apart and then this one that was a lot better. So this is like about all the Greek goddesses. So maybe just like some philosophy or how to like identify with the Greek goddesses to like feel empowered. But this one seems a little bit more clear cut. It's just about the history of like sex. Oh, it has highlights. I love her. I can't wait. Ooh, I just saw the word polyamory. So this will be super interesting. Also, if you watched my favorite books of last year, one of them was, I'm using it as a tripod, Who Cooked the Last Supper, which some of my favorite parts were about sexuality and like how that changed throughout the course of history. So I hope this will be more specific and give more details for that. I picked up a couple children's books. One of them was Holes by Lewis Satcher. I have it as a goal to read the top 100 books on Goodreads and I think this is one of them. So I just wanted to have a copy of that in my back pocket for one day. Maybe a video series on that will be upcoming. I'll let you know. And then, I could cry. As I was checking out, the woman behind me in line was like, oh my God, those are so cute. There are little Winnie the Pooh books with the most adorable covers. This one's, now we're six. We're one of a kind, no category. I just have a weakness for little classics children's books, clearly. So I had to grab those. When am I gonna see them in these bindings ever again? Oh, I was like, why would I buy this? I got this book for my mom. I'm hoping it's a thriller, because it looks like one. This one's a hoot. Round Ireland with a fridge. It is about a man who literally takes a refrigerator around Ireland, hitchhiking with a refrigerator. I believe it was John or Hank Green that originally talked about this. I'm just fascinated. This sounds funny. And also I don't read enough books about Ireland, so out of all the ones I could have chosen, I'm gonna start here. And then two more books. I got the memoir by JC Dugard called A Stolen Life. I'm pretty sure this is about a girl who was kidnapped. The synopsis is kind of vague. I can't tell if it was like family abused her or if she was taken, but this sounds interesting and I've always had an eye on this. You can really tell that I just had spicy ramen because all of the makeup around my nose has been wiped away with tissues, but don't look at my broom. Stop it. So I'm editing this vlog and realized half of it is just a book haul. So we need some more content somewhere in here. Fun fact. I read this book, so I'm gonna do like a mini review. We'll get back to the haul in a minute. It's all books I probably won't read for five more years. Apparently, this is like one of the most famous missing person cases of all time. I was sheltered, I didn't know about her. So it is in fact a kidnapping. She was kidnapped when she was 11 and kept for 18 years. I listened to this on audio, it's narrated by the author. And it's one of those books that I listened to in one sitting and then for the next hour was like googling every documentary about her I could find. I'm not gonna say it was like the best book I've ever read. 
because I don't think anyone's there for like artistic delivery. We're all just morbidly curious about what would happen if you were kidnapped for 18 years. So I don't think I ended up giving that book a rating. It was addicting. If you've heard of her case and want to know details, obviously huge trigger warning for like sexual assault and child abuse and in general that. But even if you're not interested in reading it, like her story is so amazing so i would still like look her up and watch like the dateland or 2020 or whatever i don't understand crime tv shows but one of them that talks about you know how she's recovering from that and like not to be a horse girl but she does a like horse therapy program and i love that for her yeah that's my review i apologize that most of this vlog is me hauling books and not reading them okay back to the haul and then on my way home i stopped by the little free library by me i bought a holodosity book i forget what it was called i took it with me just in case there was anything i'd rather have in the little free library and i saw this and i don't know if i would have liked it more than holodosity but i've heard of it and it's book one in a series so tess of the road by rachel hartman it's about this girl who's supposed to go to a nunnery but then she runs away I think it's YA, so that's my haul. I gave Shelby her books that I got her for like 10 cents. Me. These images of Mary. Virgins. <laughs> Unfortunately, this happened. Um, I was sitting at my desk at work yesterday. I had a mindless task I needed to do for a couple of hours. And I was like, might as well pick up an audiobook. In my last vlog, you saw me read like the first 10 pages of this and be like, I'm not gonna read that. So I decided to restart it. This is the third book in the Bone Season series. I did a whole explanation of this in my last vlog. I'll link it. I'm trying, I'm trying, this is me trying to like this series and they're not bad they're just not that good and i only say that because i listened to it on two times speed while only half listening at this point in the series we're at book three out of book seven and only book four has come out yet the whole series is turning from like dystopian into really heavy sci-fi but like magical sci-fi the entire plot of this book is just that there's like a technology created that targets the people in this book with powers so they're like we have to disable it and the whole plot of this book is just them disabling it it's like okay what does that do to take down the bad guys like this book just felt like they were saving their own asses for 400 pages and it didn't actually help us get anywhere the only interesting villain in this was not in it this added so many characters that i don't care about I just couldn't vibe with it. I only have 26 seconds left on this memory card, so I gotta wrap this up. Long story short, I listened to it in one day, but at what cost? It was pretty boring, and I kinda didn't care, and there were too many characters, and even though I love the writing style and the audiobook narrator, I'm just not loving it. I gave it two stars. We'll see if I read the fourth one. There, the end. Babies, it's a snow day. Yeah, by snow day, I mean I'm working from home. But I didn't realize the snow was already melting. I wanted to go out in it, so I have a couple packages to get and I need to take out my trash. Let's go explore the snow. It's really not snow, much more just ice. I'm scared of the fall. I've just tried to do foundation now. I feel like I look like the snowball. It's been like a week since I've sat down to talk, but I'm feeling more comfortable with the idea that, hey, some days I don't want to record. And also, I didn't really do much reading wise in the time that I decided not to record. And honestly, if I hadn't called it out just now, you probably wouldn't have noticed that like a week went by in the timestamp. I'm still making my way through Lovely War. This is one of those books that I read and I read and I read, but I look and I haven't made that much page progress. So I just reached the halfway point last night. I'm on page 280 out of like 460. After putting this down for a while, I did have to kind of go back in and understand like why certain other gods were jumping in to tell parts of the story. Then I realized Aphrodite can only tell the love story part of this. Obviously in World War One, there are other factors than being in love. So Ares will jump in and talk about the war when it's like 
only the male's point of view when he's in the trenches. Apollo will jump in when it's talking about the musician, and then Hades jumps in when it's about like death. Now that I understand that more, and I got further into it and I was on a solid reading pace where I didn't have interrupted time to read this. I'm really liking it. This book is developing the characters so nicely. And it's interesting that it's told from the perspective of these gods who like deal with this all the time, but these particular humans are so interesting to them. So I love the narration of it. I just haven't read a book in a long time where the characters are so easily likable. Especially Hazel and James, which are like the main couple I would say. And even the other couple that it's introducing, Aubrey and the Belgian girl, Cosette. Their dialogue just jumps off the page. They feel like real people. I've been like weeping about this book like a happy cry because it's so sweet. I still have a really hard time with the chapters about this black soldier slash musician because we are using every slur in the book other than the n-word. It's a lot and I understand we need to unpack that nuance in the book. Sure, that was a real thing that happened in the 1910s but I would place a major trigger warning on this if you are a black reader looking forward to this that has a lot of hate speech and violence in it against only the black characters. But for this book being a book about a love story, it's doing the damn thing. I'm very emotional about it. And I can only hope that this book has a happy ending, but I have no idea. So while it is snowy and I'm watching everyone walk their dogs in the ice, I really want to just like hunker down with a hot chocolate and read this because it's really good. But I do have to go back to work right now because work from home life. I finished it. <laughs> I've been crying for like an hour, but I don't want to tell you whether it's a sad or a happy cry. Don't perceive the timestamp right now. My sleep schedule is whack, especially working from home because there's a winter storm and naps. I'm just speechless. It was really, really good. Not quite a full five star, maybe like 4.5. Really well written, really emotional. Just freaking love these characters. I had no idea where it was going to go after like the midway point, but I loved it. It made sense. It was really well done. I'm <laughs> out here crying. What doing? ACP? Okay. I honestly do not have more of a review other than it was good. I realized I have a little unboxing. I forgot that I ordered this, but I feel like you would be my audience for something like this, so indulge me for a couple minutes. Uh, I saw this on Twitter and fell in love and I needed to have it physically. So I ordered from this girl's like print shop. This is the cutest little art print. It's Taylor Swift themed. This girl has a whole shop with like Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, all the popular things right now. I forget what this is called, like the Taylor Swift Island. I don't know, but it's just like a map of all these different Taylor Swift themed things. The one that kills me is robbers to the east clowns to the west like there's so much folklore and evermore on this there's centennial park there's the lookout the all too well 10 minute version bridge <laughs> there's some traffic lights saying i don't know all around the town like little things i sat there and looked at this for like 10 minutes when i first saw it on twitter and it is adorable and i'm gonna get a frame for it and then while i was on her shop i was browsing and i saw this it's a little all too well bookmark that just says i remember it all too well and it's like the scarf the dance the drawer am i gonna ruin a paper bookmark in like two minutes yeah, that's my little Taylor Swift haul. I'll link her website down below if you're interested. I started two books last night before I went to bed. I ended up going to bed at like 5 a.m. I don't wanna talk about it. Ooh, I'm watching someone walk over the ice. Good luck. So this first one is like quick, easy, fun. It is A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. My friend Emily is obsessed with Maisie Eddings, specifically the sequel to this book, I believe. I read a review of this that gave me the ick, and so I'm like, I want to push through it because I want to read the sequel and I want to enjoy Maisie Eddings, but it is so hard for me 
to enjoy adult romance now because I find so much of it corny and overwritten and unrealistic. We hit a sweet spot a few years ago where there were so many good ones coming out and now I feel like it is so oversaturated so it's really hard to find ones that I like. This one's about a woman who goes to dental school and while she's there she like runs into a guy who's carrying some like teeth molds down the stairs and ruins them so she's like let me help you. She's a fourth year student like set on being a surgeon all A's super intense and he's like a first year student just chilling. I don't know much else beyond that because I'm literally like a chapter into this. <laughs> yeah I'm like barely 25 pages if that. As predicted the dialogue is making me cringe at certain points but I'm liking the writing other than that. This copy is due back to the library like this week so I also have it as an ebook and I don't know I think I'm just gonna meander my way through this and see if it piques my interest more than it has but then keeping an eye on the calendar I thought it would be pertinent to pick up a couple of books by black authors since it's a black history month keeping in mind that black history month is not the excuse to read all black authors and then ignore them for the rest of the year so let this be a reminder a couple of books by black authors are high up on my TBR one of them being Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I haven't read a nonfiction book about feminism since like college. I feel like a lot of what I read just echo chambered my own understanding of it. I would just read books about feminism where I was like, yeah, yeah, but it was like restating everything I already knew. This one is, as the title already implies, about the intersectionality of feminism and how a lot of times feminism, feminism, what? Feminism. Feminism as a movement tends to centralize around white women's problems and uses like black women as a stepping stone like hey if we achieve this then eventually it will also trickle down to you. But this book argues that things that are more hood like getting basic rights, basic food security, education, job opportunities are all feminists problems and not just for hood feminists or for like black women. So it's about stepping up your advocacy for marginalized groups and being more attentive to your experience is not everyone's experience especially when it comes to like socioeconomic class and race. I read the introduction in chapter one of this last night so I'm on like page 15. The first chapter was about white women and solidarity and how when women say they're being allies of black women a lot of times they're really just ignoring them or they don't want to confront criticism that they could be addressing feminist issues better to include more women that aren't just white women. So far, tabbing a lot of things. I think I'm past the point in like my journey of being anti-racist where I don't really bristle anymore at being told like you could be doing better, you are part of the problem. But I think if I would have read this like five years ago I would have been like what do you mean that I'm not doing well but now I'm like yeah. <laughs> I benefit from privilege in a lot of ways that I don't even understand. So this is a perfect time for me to be reading this because I can really soak it in and sit with that criticism and areas of improvement. So. I might just do like a chapter of this per night as well since it's nonfiction. The next chapter is about gun violence. Really interested in that. So far so good. I'm liking this a lot. This evening's top news on channel 7. Do you use your cat's butt as a microphone or is that just me? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You still handsome. I have no middle part so I look like a boy because I tried to French braid my own hair for the first time. Also, I'm on mobile so this might be shaky but it's been a couple of weeks since I've updated. The purpose and reason for that is because I have not made any progress in my books. <laughs> I haven't been feeling like reading, like maybe the enthusiasm to get back into booktube has started to wear off a little bit where now I'm just like, maybe I should go on my phone. So the book I'm still like taking a chapter at a time is this one. I just keep reading it before bed and then falling asleep. <laughs> but I'm liking it, like I'm learning a lot. However, the other book I'm reading I'm like 40% of the way through A Brush With Love and I think I might DNF it tonight. Like I really just cannot vibe with it. In general, I'm becoming more and more aware that it is impossible for me to enjoy contemporary romance. This book in particular is kind of obnoxious because this main character is so obsessed with this guy and the opposite is true as well. But m me just spectating this relationship is so uncomfortable because I'm like, both of you are just like average people arguably like boring and cringy people. 
but the entire inner monologue is like, he is so devilishly handsome. Like, I want to climb him. Oh my God, he's the most interesting person I've ever met. And the conversation that spurred that inner monologue is him saying that his favorite movie was Top Gun. Like, girly, that's every man ever. <laughs> I've been kind of cursed by my TikTok algorithm that, like, makes fun of millennials. <laughs> Not to roast my own audience, because I am a millennial cusp. But the best way I can describe this book is that it is written in, like, millennial cringe. Which feels like every romance book probably is, because they're all written by women in their 20s and 30s. But this one is especially hard to get through. I just don't like the writing style. I don't like the characters. Like, there's genuinely nothing redeemable about this book, so I don't know why I'm struggling through it. Actually, I do know why. Because I know the sequel is better, and I want to read the sequel, but at what cost? <laughs> the thing I said to Bonnie tonight when I was telling her about it on FaceTime is, it's a book that I should relate to, and I want to relate to, because the main character has anxiety, and she's like, I don't have time for a relationship. I have my whole life I need to get together and you know adding in that equation of a man one is a distraction and two is out of my control and she needs like control for her general anxiety which I'm like same girly but I'm trying so hard to not relate to her because she's so unbearable to read about it's like this book is targeted for me but I refuse to relate to her and have any enjoyment from it because I'm just having such a terrible time reading it. If I finished it, it would probably be like a two star book. I'm not like one star miserable, but like I've said in my past vlogs, I really just cannot force my way through cringy romance anymore. And I'm cringing. I'm cringing at this one. So what I've learned is that veering from my spreadsheet did not work. <laughs> Therefore, I'm going back to my spreadsheet and I'm picking up the next book that's the highest on my list, which is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. And somehow I have an arc of this. If anyone wants this after I'm done reading it, let me know. So now that I have finally jumped back in to give you an update of where I am with the two books that I introduced, I feel like it's a good ending place as well. Because I'm sure it's going to take me two weeks to read this and no one wants to sit around and wait for another vlog for that long. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you're currently reading down below and if you're enjoying it or not. The final Final remarks will be from Gordo himself. Gordo, are you so handsome? Gordo, do you think so bad? Oh. <laughs> Bye everyone. Why can I not blow a kiss?